Okay guys, um, so it's been a while since you've seen one of these videos, but um, this is one for um, a topic we've actually already talked about um, a bit in class. We, uh, we did a lab on it where you did some reading about Newton's laws and you did a bunch of activities on Newton's laws. If you can recall, uh, before the exam week, uh, we did an activity where you you know, uh, flicked a, a card with a coin on it, you uh, spun two different eggs with different um, sort of uh, insides, you, um, and also you, you uh, tried to move a, a mass from a string. So, so this is sort of just the, the lecture that's going to kind of um, maybe give you guys some more context when you look back at this. Um, when it's time to to wrap up chapter six and move on to chapter seven, um, and also to give you some notes on um, what Newton's laws are all about. So, if you're looking at the Garfield con, uh, con you, the comic here, you can see um, that uh, you know a body at rest wants to stay at rest, right? So um, that's sort of what's behind Newton's first law. So we'll be getting to that in just a minute. And uh, in this little cartoon, um, not only is it funny and does it talk about Newton's laws, but it's actually gave me kind of an inspiration uh, to do a project we're going to start soon where you're going to be making a comic strip. So uh, more on that uh, soon. So this is sort of start things out. I have a question for you to answer. Um, I'll read it and then I want you to actually pause the video and try and answer it. So if you're sitting out still in your seat on a bus that's traveling 100 kilometers per hour on a highway, is your body at rest or in motion? And the second part of the question is, um, the bus stops and then you rock forward. Why does that happen? So I want you to take a second, maybe a minute or two, pause it and write your responses. Uh, later, I want you to um, go back and edit those responses after, or after uh, watching the whole lecture. Okay, so um, in this um, video, we're going to see three major things here. So the first law of motion, so number one, um, number two, and number three. I got a nice stylus now, so this should be good. Um, so uh, we're going to see lots of examples. I'm going to try and show you guys tons of little pictures and, and direct you to some, some kind of conceptual ideas about each, each of these laws. So the first law says that an object uh, remains at rest, an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion at a constant speed and in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So um, some of these things would be kind of familiar, right? Like the speed, constant speed, and the straight line. So there's no accelerations, right? It's going um, at, a, at a constant rate forever. And an object will do that unless an outside force stops it. So um, what this sort of tells us is thinking back to net force is that um, it describes what happens when an object has a, a net force of zero, right? So an object can um, be either moving or at rest and have a net force of zero. Um, and then uh, so this sort of explains why that is. So uh, it'll stay at rest forever, right, unless something moves it. So if you think back to some of those experiments we did last week or two weeks ago, um, we know that, that that weight hanging from the string would have just hung there, right, forever, unless you came along and moved it at some somehow, okay? And um, that's true of every object in the known universe. All right, so Newton's first law, there's kind of two parts, we're, two ways we're going to look at it. At first, um, this, this idea of something being at rest. So something will stay at rest unless it's acted on by something. So we say acted by meaning um, a push or a pull. Um, so, um, you know, when you begin to accelerate your car, you're acting upon it, right, by hitting the accelerator. Uh, when you start to pedal your bike, you're acting on your bike by turning the chain. Um, that's sort of putting any energy into something, right? So... Um, the second part of Newton's law is when things are in motion. So you have to think about it in these two ways. So kind of get in the habit of that, of thinking about Newton's first law in these two parts, how objects behave when they're at rest and when they're in motion. So when an object's in motion, it'll continue to move with the same velocity unless an unbalanced force acts on it. Okay. Um, so if you think back to kind of like uh, when, a, when a person orbits the planet, right, we kind of said that you continue... Um, going around and around the planet uh, because um, there's not a force uh, other than gravity acting on, on you, okay? Um, so this next picture might be a little bit easier to show. Whoa. Okay, not sure what happened there. Um, so 
We've got um, a guy in a go kart here going forward, um, and you're 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 just traveling straight ahead in your go kart. You know when you when you push the go kart pedal, you kind of know that it only goes at one speed, right? So you're traveling at a constant speed until your an outside force acts on you. Right? In this case, the outside force would be another car in your way. Okay, um, so that car changes your velocity, right? It changes your motion. Um, and um, the reason you go forward, you, know, you being this kid here, right, is that your motion, you didn't hit the car, right? The car hit the other bumper car. So your body will continue moving with the same velocity. So um, if you look over here at this picture, that's why that happens, right? That's why when you hit another car, like an oncoming car, your car stops, but you continue moving. Uh, we're going to look more about uh, at this concept when we think about momentum. Um, but we can also, again, think about our experiment from two weeks ago. So um, when you hit the card, your the card, the coin is at rest, right? The card moves. So um, in this case, back to the this, this example up here, when your bumper car hits another car, the force is acting on the car, not you, right? So you continue moving with the same velocity. So the coin, right? has a velocity of zero, right? So the coin's gonna stay at its velocity of zero when the card is hit and just fall into the cup, okay? So um, that explains why you lurch forward when you hit another car and explains why the coin falls um, in, right? So the coin has inertia um, that's not being uh, acted on by an outside force. The outside force is only hitting the card, uh, in this case, or the bumper card, bumper car. Um, so how does friction come into play? Um, so friction between an object and, this, and the surface is moving over. The object is moving over is an example of an unbalanced force that stops motion. So this sort of explains why um, um, if we like roll the ball down like an infinitely long hallway that's carpeted, right? Eventually that ball is going to stop. Um, eventually that ball is going to stop because the ball and the ground have uh, friction between them, right? So the ball will eventually slow, slow, slow its velocity until it's at a complete stop here. You can hear my cat in the background there, sorry. Um, his name is Gil. I'll try and get him to stop. So um, friction is going to slow down um, the ball, the ball eventually, right? So it's going to pose that force. So in this case, it doesn't look like, really look like there's a force acting on that ball that's in motion, but there really is, right? Because friction is you know, hard to detect. Um, so now um, the idea of inertia comes into play. So sometimes we kind of can actually call the first law of motion inertia. Um, it's the tendency of an object to resist any change in motion, right? To stay at rest. Um, and I've said this to you guys a lot. Objects want to stay at rest, right? Inertia explains like that all objects initially want to be at rest. And um, it takes something else outside to make them, you know, move. Okay, guys, so um, this slide is sort of just self-explanatory. It's something we've already talked about. Um, we know that the more mass something has, the more inertia it has, right? So it's easier to move something with less inertia. Um, I think back to a question I gave you in the lab last week, uh, which stated uh, had a backpack, um, and it had you explain why it's easier to accelerate with a backpack that's empty versus a backpack that's full. Um, and... Um, this is just uh, it should have been in your explanation that the backpack with this that's less 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 full has less inertia, therefore resists your motion less. It lets it lets you um, uh, move more freely. Okay, so um, this I'm not going to spend much more time on. It's kind of just common sense. It's easier to throw a baseball than a bowling ball because there's less mass uh, in a baseball and therefore less uh, inertia. So the second law of motion um, states the acceleration of an object depends upon the mass of the object and the amount of force. So um, this describes the motion. So if you think about the first law, it describes um, sort of 
uh, how and why objects move, how they begin to move. This one talks about when they're moving, how do they move? How is the, what is their motion like? Um, so the second law um, um, is, is like, well, if something's already moving, well, how do we calculate how fast it's moving, how fast it's accelerating? Um, this is all about what happens after a force is applied, okay? How does it accelerate? So there's two parts to this one, too. Um, the first part is um, the acceleration of an object decreases as its mass increases, okay? Its acceleration increases as its mass decreases, okay? So um, so as the, uh, the mass increases, acceleration decreases, okay? And again, uh, as, acceler uh, as acceleration increases, mass decreases. Decreases, so it has this sort of inverse relationship. Um, um, the that just essentially says like the harder the, the the more large something gets, the harder it is to change its velocity to speed it up. All right, um, so the more bricks you add to your wheelbarrow, the the more difficult it is, the more force it takes you to actually move that wheelbarrow faster. Um, and if you took bricks off, if you reduced the mass, you could accelerate it faster. Um, sort of a common sense thing. Um, that's part one. Part two um, talks about um, as you change force. Okay, so uh, back to the wheelbarrow. If you push harder, right, if you get a buddy to come over and help you push that wheelbarrow, you can uh, add more force, right? So you're, now you're talking about how um, you can change the acceleration by adding more force. Part one over here talked about changing the acceleration by changing the mass. Well, part two talks about, well, what happens if you change the force? If you add more force, if you push something with less force, you're going to uh, decrease that acceleration. So it kind of is, is thought about like this. Um, you've got Johnny here pushing an empty cart. Well, you can accelerate that a lot. See how the, the arrow is bigger here. Um, it's no problem. You can run all day with that, go as fast as he, his legs can carry him. But if you add more mass... Um, the acceleration of the empty cart is, is greater than the acceleration of the loaded cart. You've got more mass here, your acceleration is going to be less. Okay, You're not going to be able to accelerate that as fast. Um, but this time, now look at little Johnny here. He's kind of pushing harder. You can see his, his, his arms are, are locked in here. He's pushing forward. His shoulders are engaged. And he's really giving it his all now. So um, you can increase the acceleration if you, if you give more force. All right, and let's say little Johnny was joined by Susie, his short friend, who's also pushing the cart, right? So we can, we can um, increase the acceleration by adding another person pushing the cart, right? So AKA equals more force, right? So there's other ways we can, we can increase acceleration too, right? They're not on this slide, but let's say we decrease the friction, right? So we know friction is opposing this cart. Let's say we put some grease down here, or, you know, we, we greased up the, the, the road, or we added more wheels, or we, I don't know, uh, made it into a decline, right? We, we, we uh, use gravity to kind of pull us down and increase our, our, our acceleration. So there's, there's other things we could do to increase acceleration, but for Newton's laws, I'm mainly talking about um, mass and force, okay? And I guess in, if you are reducing friction, you are sort of... Um, reducing a resisting force. So it's still the same thing. Um, so the key point to remember from this picture is um, you can change acceleration by um, changing the mass or changing the force. Pushing harder here and just, I should use this. I should use this thing more. Um, pushing harder here and more mass here. Ooh, that's cool. All right, more examples. Um, kind of the same thing with just different pictures. Um, you can see acceleration, again, is greater here, right? Less here. Well, why is the acceleration less? What increased? The mass, right? So let's go back to drawing. Um, uh, see the mass increased, acceleration decreased. Okay, same thing here. We've got, um, let's think of some good names. This is Roger and Margaret. So Roger and Margaret, well, Margaret is watching Roger and uh, Louie pull these two rocks here, and, and Margaret is impressed with uh, Roger's effort, right? He's look at, he's taking more force to move this larger rock. Oh, look at that. So uh, more force. Why is he using more force? Well, because this has more mass. Okay. 
and uh, Louis over here, well, he's got this little tiny rock here, right? It's, it takes a lot less force to move it. So uh, over here, same, same, same exact thing. Um, notice that the acceleration is much larger here than it is here. Why is, why is the acceleration greater? Well, um, you tell me, guys. There's less what? Say it out loud in your kitchens. Less mass. Right. So um, there's less mass with the lawnmower than there is to push the car. Okay, so this can be expressed mathematically. Um, it's a pretty easy equation. It's right here. Force equals mass times acceleration. Boom, right? So um, we can figure out um, um, the amount of force needed to move something or the more amount of force that's used to move something. And we can also figure out with this acceleration, right? So you can find out how fast something's accelerating or with, it, with the speed is, uh, rate is accelerating by dividing the force by the mass, okay? And similarly, you can manipulate that to show um, the amount of force too by just kind of rearranging that, all right? So um, this equation can be applied in a lot of different ways. Here's one example of the next page. Okay, guys, we've got a couple math questions here. So um, here on this example, they're kind of showing you here. Um, you can see how the equation is used. Um, so it's acceleration equals force divided by mass. All right, so in this example, they give you uh, a force of 14.4 newtons. So it's something is, is uh, moving with that force and it's got a mass of three kilograms. You can accelerate, you can figure out how fast that uh, object is accelerating or moving. So I want you to try these three questions over here. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm, I, please, please pause the video at this point and take maybe a minute per question um, and show your work and do those. Okay, I'll, I'll just go over them really quick after that. All right, so it's been, uh, hopefully you paused it and you have now done all three of these. So for number one, um, we're kind of looking at a simple question where you are um, calculating the acceleration of a mass uh, of 7 grams um, if a force of 78.6 is used to move it toward Earth. So for this, you're just simply going to take um, the, for the uh, force, which is 68.6 newtons, and divide by 7 kilograms. If you got the right answer, you got 9.8 meters per second, which is coincidentally also the uh, acceleration due to gravity on Earth, right? So we know all things, if they're in a vacuum with no air resistance, fall at that speed, okay? So the next question, a little bit different, as you kind of manipulate the formula to find the force, right? So if you think back to the last slide, um, you can change this formula around to show uh, F equals, equals M a force times acceleration, or mass times acceleration, excuse me. <clears throat> so you have to calculate the force here, so you're m multiplying uh, 1,250 kilograms times 40 meters per second. If you did that right, you got, bingo, 50,000 newtons. A lot of force to move the car, okay? Um, so in this case, we just knew the mass of the car was this. We knew it was accelerating at that speed. What force did you need to actually push at that speed? Um, and it was a lot of force, this force, okay? The last one, same exact process. Uh, exactly the same. So for this one, you're simply um, doing the same thing. You're going to take a mass of 175 kilograms, which is in this case a lion, and you're going to um, multiply it times acceleration, which is two. <clears throat> and then we know, oops, uh, we know that the if we multiply these two together, you get 350 newtons. So what it takes to move that lion that speed. Okay, so uh, not too bad, uh, and we're all done. Oops, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you, I have a picture to show you in just a minute um, and, and calculate force pretty easily. So let's move on to Newton's third law. Um, Newton's third law states, whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts, exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. So uh, Newton's third law of motion can be simply stated as follows. All forces act in pairs. Or the way I, I was taught to think about it, for every action, there's opposite and equal reaction, okay? So if there is a force um, that's applied on an object, um, there's always an opposite force that is exerted back, okay? And um, we've seen this a lot already um, when you think about friction and air resistance, um, but let's get into it now. Okay, so this idea of acting in pairs, there's an action and a reaction. 
It's Newton's third law states that all forces act in pairs. When a force is exerted, there's a reaction force. Okay, so um, if the action uh, is to uh, push with your skateboard in this direction, there is a reactive force back in the other direction. Okay, it could be friction. Um, it may be um, the board actually going that way and your foot going this way. And similarly, the rocket is like the, the most classic example. Um, if you burn the fuel, you're pushing gas back that way. And the opposite reaction is that the rocket goes up or the opposite direction in this case, okay, to the right. <clears throat> um, so um, some things to know about this, though. So um, force pairs don't always act on the same object. A force is always exerted on one object by another object. Um, this rule is true for all forces, including action and reaction forces. So um, this is true even when an object is not in motion. Um, if you think about when you're sitting in your chair, right? So there's two forces sit acting on you right then. I, we talked about it a ton. So uh, when you're sitting down, there's gravity pushing up on you and that reaction force pushing back up to keep you right in your seat, right? Um, so um, rea action and reaction forces do not act on the same object. Uh, if they did, then that force would be uh, zero everywhere. Nothing would ever move. Um, so um, that's that. Okay, so it's actually hard to see um, Newton's third law, um, mainly because we don't see the pulling of the uh, larger object toward the smaller object. So let me put it like this. Um, when an object falls, gravity pulls an object toward Earth. We all know that, right? We all know when that ball falls toward the earth, here's the surface, that the earth pulls the, earth, the ball down. Um, but we don't see the mass of the earth pulling back up on the object. So that um, isn't, isn't really ever visible. That's because the earth is much larger than the mass of the object. Thus, the acceleration of earth is much smaller than the acceleration of the object. Um, if you think back to Newton's second law, um, we know that um, acceleration equals force divided by mass, right? So think about it. If the mass is much larger, um, this, this number here, this quantity, becomes much smaller, right? If this increases, this um, the acceleration must decrease. So that, that means that um, the rate at which the Earth is pulled toward the ball or moved toward the ball is infinitesimal. It, it is tiny, right? Almost imperceptible. Um, compared to the rate at which the ball is pulled toward the Earth, um, because the Earth's mass is way bigger than the, Earth, the ball's mass. Okay. Okay. So um, some more pictures now. Uh, this corner. This is sort of talking about Newton's first law. This picture. Um, and what you're seeing here in this picture um, is um, an object at rest. Right. You've got an outside force coming in, moving, and moving in. And now um, this object is moving. So, um, and this object is at rest. Okay? So, um, we would say this ball's inertia is overcome by the moving ball. And there's this collision. So, this, this idea of a collision and collision forces is what we're going to talk about in the next section when we talk about momentum. So the cool thing about this is, is, and this is something that I'm going to prove to you with a calculation, is that because of this law of momentum, so let's say this ball here is moving an acceleration of maybe 2 meters per second. After the collision, this ball, the ball that gets pushed by the moving ball, will be moving at an acceleration of 2 meters per second. Okay, So it's like this force that was started here, over here, is transferred to this ball. Pretty cool, right? That's um, uh, some the law of conservation of energy we're going to see, which is really neat. Um, so this explains the first law. So the next picture, series of pictures, talks more about um, Newton's second law. <clears throat> so the amount of the amount of acceleration, right, that this this elephant is accelerating is determined by its mass. Because this is a big old fat elephant, this kid guy can't push it uh, very fast. Okay, and uh, Ken Griffey Jr., great baseball player. Um, what you can see here is we can calculate the force of, of this ball leaving the ballpark uh, by calculating the mass of the ball times the acceleration of his bat hitting it, right? Um, so what he's doing here is we, we can really, uh, uh, showing you that um, 
this, these three factors are in place when uh, we're talking about an object in motion. And finally, um, this also shows Newton's second law. So um, we've got here, and I'm going to label these. These are all the second law. Oops, I don't need, really need that, do I? Um, so this is showing Newton's second law. Um, here we've got a box, right? And the box is has um, takes a greater force to move the heavier box versus the box that's empty takes a less force to move it, right? Um, because of Newton's second law. Because with this law, we know that um, motion or acceleration is <clears throat> um, governed by or um, sort of determined by both force and mass. Okay? And then finally, these pictures are, are related to Newton's third law. Cool. Well, so with Newton's third law, we've, again, we've got the example of the, um, the space shuttle of the spaceship, right? So um, what we've got here is this idea of thrust, which is um, the upward movement or the upward force going up, right? So these rockets are, are pushing down on the Earth. There's this downward force of the, of the gas uh, as it's burned here in, in, the, in the rockets pushing down this way, and there's the opposite force of the, of the, of the, um, of the earth uh, pushing against um, gravity and pushing against air to go up, right? And then same thing here, we have a force and we have an opposite reaction force pushing against it, right? So um, the hammer hits the nail and um, the nail hits the hammer, right? So believe it or not, there's like an equal force pushing back up on the hammer. Um, and um, because the, the wall, right, isn't too rigid, the, the, the nail goes into the wall. Otherwise, um, you know, nothing would happen. Um, okay, so we have the opposite and equal reaction of Newton's third law there. All right, so that's it, guys. Um, this is going to give you a little bit of notes and context for um, Newton's three laws. Um, probably not the best video ever made, but um, uh, I think it helps a bit. Um, we're going to get ready to start um, a project and wrap up this chapter pretty quick and get on to chapter 7. So um, be ready and be ready, be ready for a quiz tomorrow in class. Hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.